Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 17th of June. India's Defence Minister calls military hiring scheme golden opportunity, violent protests continue. Sri Lanka left with fuel stocks for around five days, says Power and Energy Minister Vijasekra. And centuries-old golden throne kept on display in Nepal attracts visitors. And now for all the details, India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Friday called the government's military recruitment scheme Agnipath as a golden opportunity, while the three service chiefs termed it transformational in the wake of nationwide protests against the new policy, which also turned violent in some states. Amidst widespread backlash, the government has announced a one-time upper age limit relaxation to 23 years for recruitment through this process. As protest against the Indian government's military recruitment scheme Agnipat continued in parts of the country, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Friday called a new policy a golden opportunity for youngsters, while the three service chiefs termed it transformational. Thousands of young men, mostly in Bihar and Uttar Pradesh states, took to the streets for a second day, with protests turning violent in some areas, as Defence Forces aspirants torched railway infrastructure to express concern about employment opportunities after serving their four-year terms and disappointed to miss out on a pension. Amid the backlash, the government on Friday announced it will give a one-time relaxation of upper age limit from 21 to 23 years. As part of the process, since recruitment had been frozen for the past two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. पिछले दो साल से सेना में भर्ती की प्रक्रिया न होने के कारण बहुत से नौजवानों को सेना में भर्ती होने का अवसर नहीं मिल मिला यह सच्चाई है इसलिए युवाओं के भविष्य को ध्यान में रखते हुए कि अग्निवीरों की भर्ती की आयु सीमा को इस बार बढ़ाकर 21 से 23 वर्ष कर दिया जाए the government has said the armed forces will keep only 25% of the recruits after the end of their four-year terms. This has irked most of the aspirants. At least one protester was also reportedly killed in a clash with police in southern city of Sikandarabad. Indian Army Chief Manoj Pandey urged youths to avail the opportunity as he hailed the scheme and informed a recruitment schedule will be released within two days. Soldiers have previously been recruited by the Army, Navy and the Air Force separately and typically serve for up to 17 years for the lowest ranks. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan has called for nationwide protests on Sunday after the government once again increased fuel prices this week to win IMF funding amid an economic crisis. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif had earlier blamed the hike on failed policies of the previous government led by Khan, which he said forced him to raise the prices. Pakistan's ousted premier and opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan on Thursday called for countrywide protests on June 19 over rising inflation after the government once again increased fuel prices this week to stave off a balance of payments crisis. The third fuel price hike since May 26 is designed to facilitate the disbursement of the next tranche of a stalled US$6 billion US dollar International Monetary Fund IMF loan program officials said. But raising fuel prices could prove politically perilous for Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's government, which has said the move was imperative to prevent the country from going bankrupt and blamed the hike on previous Imran Khan-led government. Khan had given fuel subsidies in his last days in power to cool down public sentiment 
in the face of double-digit inflation. The PTI chairman, who is now trying to force fresh elections, said through the protests he wants everyone to come out against the imported government's anti-people policies. Meanwhile, Sirajul Haq, leader of opposition Jamate Islami Party, called for protests from next week when the government is due to unveil its national budget. The government has crossed all limits in IMF slavery, he said on Twitter. Pakistan's foreign reserves have fallen to about 9.2 billion US dollars, below two months' worth of imports, prompting concern that the country could follow Sri Lanka in defaulting on its foreign debts. Sri Lanka's fuel stocks will last for about five more days, its power and energy minister said on Thursday, as the island nation awaits official confirmation from the Indian government for a new dollar 500 million credit line for fuel. Sri Lanka's power and energy minister Kanchana Vijasekra on Thursday gave a detailed explanation on the current fuel crisis, saying the country is facing difficulties and challenges in importing fuel at present. Chronic fuel shortages have worsened this week, with kilometers long lines at some gas stations countrywide, leading to sporadic protests as vehicle owners wait, sometimes overnight, for petrol and diesel. Sri Lanka is unable to make 725 million US dollars in overdue payments to suppliers and also struggling to open letters of credit for future shipments, Vijasekra said. Sri Lanka is waiting for official confirmation on a $500 million credit line from Indian government's Exim Bank, which Vijasekra said would be used to fund fuel shipments for the next few weeks. India has been a key supporter during the financial crisis, having poured in about $3 billion US dollars in assistance, including $1 billion credit line for essential imports, and a $400 million swap. Sri Lanka has reached out to multiple countries, including Russia, to discuss fuel import options that would provide supplies worth several months, Vijasekra said. The country is also in talks with the International Monetary Fund for a bailout package and a delegation from the lender is expected to arrive in Sri Lanka on 20th June. The country of 22 million people is caught in its worst financial crisis in seven decades after its foreign exchange reserves dwindled to record lows, with dollars running out to pay for essential imports including food, medicine and fuel. Moving on. Since the Taliban took over Kabul in August last year, the campus of Afghanistan's American University was closed and its students were left uncertain of their future. 110 students travelled to Iraq, Suleimania to complete their studies. 32 graduated in the beginning of June, including Shakila Mohammadi and Ismatullah Sahak. They want to complete their master's degrees abroad, hoping one day they will be able to return home. 22-year-old Shakila Mohammadi left Afghanistan and settled down in northern Iraq's Kurdistan region, usually considered more stable than other parts of Iraq. Of the 110 Afghan students that travelled to Suleimania to complete their studies, 32 graduated in the beginning of June, including Shakila. A week before she left Afghanistan in October 2021, Shakila visited her hometown on a short break from university. She recalls, at that time, I did not know that this was the last time I could visit my favourite place. But then on day of evacuation, when I say goodbye to my mother and my father, I realized that I wasn't able to see them for a very long time. So at that moment, I decided that the only thing that I should focus on was my dreams to make them come true. Since the Taliban took over Kabul in August 2021, girls have largely been banned from going to secondary schools. The campus of Afghanistan's American University was closed and its students were left uncertain of their future. After several weeks of online studies, Mohammadi and another student, Esma Tullah Sahak, were offered the chance to travel to Iraqi Kurdistan. 
to continue the education at the American University of Iraq Suleimani. Now, with their bachelor degree in their pocket, they want to complete their master's degree abroad, hoping to one day be able to return home. As long as there are challenges and hurdles uh, for my fellow Afghans, maybe I'm talking about my generation, as long as there are challenges for them acquiring a decent quality education, I see myself obliged to partake in the effort to educate as many Afghans as, as, as we can, as I can, as possible. According to the UNHCR, Afghans make up to one of the largest refugee populations worldwide. There are 2.6 million registered Afghan refugees, of whom 2.2 million are registered in Iran and Pakistan alone. In news from Nepal, Nepal government on Thursday reiterated that the Himalayan nation will not be a part of the United States government's controversial state partnership program, SPP, which became a political hot potato with both the ruling and the opposition parties eager to wash their hands of it. On Thursday, ruling Nepali Congress blamed the main opposition CPN-UML for agreeing to implement the program when it was in power and while UML counter blamed the former for requesting the US to implement SPP when it was at hemp. This followed after some media earlier this week leaked the proposed draft of the partnership agreement that said some US security personnel could stay in Nepal for an indefinite period. Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba had earlier already clarified to the ruling alliance that he would not sign the state partnership project agreement during his U.S. visit, expected to be held next month. More news from Nepal. A centuries-old golden throne was put on display in the premises of Patan Darbar Square in Nepal's Lalitpur city on Thursday, which attracted scores of visitors. The throne, entirely made of gold, belongs to the king of Lalitpur and is displayed once a year for the public. A nearly four centuries old gold throne was put on public display on Thursday in Nepal's Lalitpur city on the steps of the Krishna temple and the premises of the Patan Durbar Square, which housed the former royal palace built in 1666 AD. With the formal end of the Malla regime in Nepal, the royal throne belonging to the king of Lalitpur had remained unattended and disregarded inside the Patan Durbar. The seat for the king is made over the structure of Garut, a Hindu demigod with two lions on both the sides, standing over a pair of elephants symbolizing wealth. A total of 11 snakes on the head of the throne are believed to be saviors to protect the king from evil powers. The throne is put on display once a year. Earlier, the pieces of the throne were dismantled and kept at various locations around the Kathmandu Valley. They were collected by authorities and now the throne is kept at the Durbar Museum most of the time. In what can be termed an unusual career path, a man from India's southern Mangaluru city has quit his IT job to open a donkey milk farm. The farm is the first of its kind in Karnataka state. Srinivas Gauda, a 42-year-old software engineer, has quit his well-paying IT job to start one of its kind, the first donkey farming and training centre in India's southern Karnataka state. Gauda has made an investment of around 40 lakh rupees or nearly 51,000 US dollars into his farm, which he opened earlier this month and currently has 20 donkeys. The farm owner plans to sell donkey milk to everyone for its nutritional value. He claims to have received orders worth 21,000 US dollars until now. Gauda says several people made fun of him about this idea to open a donkey farm, but he found it a lucrative option. So presently, presently we have 20 donkeys. So, so totally overall investment uh, almost 40, 42 lakhs. You know, invested uh, as of now. Uh, we were basically we planning uh, initial stage uh, to sell off uh, milk, donkey's milk, because donkey's milk, uh, you know, which will give more immunity booster of uh, you know human body and uh, it uh, you know diseases control. 
the uh, basically donkey milk is you know disease control so that is the reason uh, we launching uh, you know donkey milk first according to goda with the advent of technology such as laundry machines washermen no longer use donkeys to carry clothes around leading to their neglect and decline in numbers he said he was deeply touched by the predicament of donkeys well that's all we have for you from south asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India